My life as an experimental physicist can be seen as the interval between these two pictures. The first picture is me and George Helke with a field emission microscope in 1958 at the University of Southampton. The second picture is 50 years later, taken at the International Bureau of Weights and Measures with my friend Richard Davis when we measured the Newtonian constant of gravitation. Between these two pictures is my life as a scientist. I first went to the National Physical Laboratory where I worked on temperature and many other things. One of the interesting things I did was to try and measure the temperature of the turbine blades in the engine of the Concorde. This didn't quite work out, but I learned a lot of things about Concorde engines. In 1999, when I was actually on board a Concorde, I was able to tell the pilot that something he didn't know, that the turbine blades of his engines were glowing quite a bright red. In 1977, I moved to the International Bureau of Weights and Measures in Paris, where I eventually became director. I had to visit laboratories in different countries and organize relations between countries in terms of their measurement science. This was, took a great deal of time. The danger of this sort of thing is you get out of touch with science. I always took great care to keep one foot in the lab and I carried on doing experiments. And this stood me in great stead because I knew that when I visited labs and when I talked about science, people treated me with respect because they knew that I was still a working scientist. One of the big projects I'm now involved in is redefining the basic units of measurement in terms of the constant of physics, no longer in terms of material objects. In particular, the kilogram, which today is still defined as a piece of metal in the vault of the International Bureau of Weights and Measures. We plan to redefine the kilogram in terms of a fixed value of the Planck constant. One of the aims of this is so that people will be able to make precise measurements of mass without having to refer everything to a piece of metal in a vault in Paris. This sounds arcane, no one understands it, but in fact, it's possible to demonstrate how we plan to do this with something simple made out of a loudspeaker and Lego. And anyone can make it in their basement. Schools can make it, universities can make it, because the principle is simple, although it is linked to, to high science.